Hello, and thank you for joining um, for my presentation. So my name is Emma Riley, and I'm a researcher at the University of Oxford. And I'm going to be presenting today my study, which examines whether changing the form that a microfinance loan is dispersed in from cash to onto a mobile money account enables female business owners to overcome sharing pressure within the household, invest more of the loan in their business and improve business outcomes as a result. So to give a bit of motivation for this study um, is the fact that microfinance loans are immensely popular worldwide. So over 100 million, 140 million poor people took out microfinance loans in 2017, of which the vast majority are women. And demand is growing uh, for microfinance products, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. This is despite a series of influential studies showing that actually uh, microfinance did not have the, the benefits that have been hoped for it. Um, and there are a few benefits seen for either business or household outcomes across these, these various studies. Um, if anything, studies have shown that actually the return to capital might be particularly low for women um, as compared to men. Um, so in this study, I'm going to be looking at whether family sharing pressure uh, might be acting as a constraint on investment and hence constraining the ability of female entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. And this is premised on the um, experimental evidence which has shown that um, widespread sharing norms can reduce investment and that these sharing norms are generally um, particularly strong for women and have a particularly um, negative effect on uh, women's investment decisions. Um, and this also links to some field experiments which have shown that in particular circumstances, women can see high returns to capital investment. So for example, they can hide um, loans or grants from their spouse or if they're the only member of their family that has a business. So this really begs the question of how can we design microfinance loan products to take into account these widespread sharing norms and enable more female enterprise growth. So in this study, I look at whether changing the form of a loan um, changes the degree to which it's subject to sharing pressure. And this is really built on um, the literature, which has shown to sh for sharing norms to be quite um, dependent on the um, form that money is kept in. So for example, sharing norms are quite different for cash on one's person compared to cash they kept in a Roscoe or saving account or cash which has been invested into the business um, in a business asset. So I look at whether changing the form that a loan is dispersed in from the default of cash to onto a mobile money account affects the business of female um, enterprise owners. And I look at whether specifically sharing pressure can explain why the form of a loan might matter. So I do this by randomizing 3,000 microfinance clients of the NGO BRAC in Uganda um, who have verified businesses into three different groups. Um, so my first treatment, which I call mobile account, involves giving a mobile money account to the woman and she's told that this mobile money account is specifically for her business. So it's suggested she could use it to perform business transactions or save money for her business, to invest in her business or save profits from her business on the mobile money account. But there aren't any formal restrictions placed on the use of the account. And she also gets a, a training to make sure she's comfortable using mobile money, um, but she still receives her loan as cash in treatment one. The main difference with treatment two is then you get everything from treatment one, so the mobile money account designated for the business, but this time the microfinance loan is directly dispersed onto the mobile money account. And then lastly, I have a control group who receive their loan as cash and they don't get any new mobile money account. So there's two important takeaways from this. So firstly, everyone in my study is getting a microfinance loan. Um, it's just changing the form of the loan and the addition of mobile money accounts. Um, and secondly, the vast majority of people in my, in my study, so over 97% had used mobile money before and were familiar with mobile money. Um, so this experiment is also not about introducing mobile money for the first time. It is about um, designating mobile money accounts as for a particular purpose and then um, dispersing a loan onto those accounts. So to give a, be a brief preview of the results, I find that eight months after the microfinance loans um, were dispersed, women who receive the microfinance loan on a mobile money account have 11% higher business investment and 15% higher business profits than women who received the same microfinance loan but as cash. Um, I see that part of the loan remains on the mobile money account three months after disbursement and it's slowly worn down. And um, this 
I also checked this using sort of qualitative surveys to check that women didn't have trouble withdrawing the loan, for example, um, but generally women described choosing to leave money on the account and did not report any significant issues accessing the loan when it was dispersed onto a mobile money account. Um, I see my effects are really driven by those who struggle with household pressure at baseline um, and I see the household as a whole is better off if the, the loan is dispersed onto the mobile money account. So it's not just redistribution within the household. I find no impact of dispersing, um, of, of not dispersing a microfinance loan onto a mobile money account, so just, just giving a mobile money account on its own, um, and it's primarily because the account is not used very much. And I won't go into a lot of detail in this short presentation about that, but um, uh, that is covered in a lot more detail, why, why women didn't use these accounts um, in the, the paper accompanying this presentation. And so I contribute to four main areas of the literature. So primarily um, to um, the microfinance um, literature. So I provide the first evidence of changing the, the form of a microfinance loan to, to a digital form. So on a mobile money account can lead to, to female enterprise growth. Um, I add to the literature showing that if you give women control over their income, it changes resource allocations and can actually um, improve the situation for the household as a whole by removing the need for, for sort of costly hiding strategies to be used. I also add to the literature on default effects, which is primarily focused on defaults around savings. So, so defaulting money into a bank account as opposed to giving it as cash. Um, so I provide the first sort of evidence this can also be used to improve business outcomes. And I add to the literature on mobile money as a payment mechanism um, by showing that um, money given on a mobile money account is, is kind of perceived differently and it's spent differently than money given as cash. So I'll go through the study in a bit more detail now. So the study um, took place in urban locations, so in Kampala and in Tebe in Uganda, and so it might not be generalizable to a rural setting. Um, the study involved 3,000 female microfinance borrowers who were all taking out a new loan from BRAC, though they could be both existing clients or completely new clients to BRAC. About 80% were existing clients of BRAC. Uh, the eligibility criteria was that the woman had to have her own phone, which over 99% of them did. Very, very few women were excluded for this reason. And all of them had a business verified by BRAC, which again could differ from other microfinance contacts where the business verification is, is not so stringently enforced. Um, the microfinance loans are individual liability loans, as all BRAC loans are now, but they are um, they still involve a group structure where women meet weekly to repay the loan. And the women continue to repay their loan weekly in the groups as cash. So nothing about the repayment changed. Even the women in the mobile disbursement group continue to repay weekly in cash. And so the study took place in 2017 um, and baseline surveys began in February 2017 upon the point where a woman applied for a loan. Uh, then all the women who applied for a loan within a given week were randomized in groups of approximately 200 women uh, into the, the two treatments and control group and they would then receive their loan in, in the specified form the following week. Uh, this then continued on a rolling basis um, until sort of June uh, 2017. And then the endline survey were started in October 2017 and uh, coincided with so just before the, the loan actually expired. So the aim of that was so that women were still in their groups repaying the loan in order to reduce um, attrition. I also conducted some focus groups in August 2018 and I have um, transaction records from the mobile money provider MTN for the entire year of 2017. To give a little bit of background about the women in our businesses, uh, so the women are in their mid-30s and, and most have gone to completed primary school. Um, Two-thirds of them are married, uh, most of the rest are, are widowed or separated. Um, the household income is just under $300 a month and, and women contribute 40% um, of this from their business profits. Um, the loan is $400 and the businesses are making about $100 a month, which is said 40% of household income. The businesses women have a quite inventory focus, so they're things like food stores or, or reselling clothes and shoes. Um, and the majority of married women, their spouse also has a business. This is, um, in nearly all cases, a separate business. It's, it's very rare for the woman to report that she jointly runs the business with her spouse. 
Um, I saw quite high take up um, of the, the two treatments. So women were offered the treatments and they, they could refuse them. If they refused them, they still got their loan as cash. Um, so take up of the mobile account was, was nearly 95% and take up of the mobile disbursement treatment was 70%. And in actual fact, a further 10% wanted to get the, the loan disbursed on a mobile money account when offered it, but they couldn't do because of power cuts or network outages. So actually the demand for this was, was very high and, and women were quite enthusiastic about receiving the loan on a mobile money account, uh, which is encouraging for sort of if this was rolled out um, later. Uh, so to go through the results, so I do um, intention to treat estimates, as we said, there wasn't um, perfect take up of the interventions. So an intention to treat and COVID specification where I regress the outcome of interest on the two treatment dummies, um, the strata dummies and um, a random error, which since I randomized at the individual level, um, the standard errors are robust, but there's, there's no clustering here. And I look at three primary outcomes, which I pre-specified. So that was self-reported monthly business profit, uh, savings, so total savings, and um, capital, which is the value of both business inventory and assets described as used for the business. Uh, so this table shows the, the main effects on my primary outcomes. Um, and so what you can see is looking at the impact of the mobile disbursement treatment that uh, women had significantly higher profits, so about 15% higher profits on the, um, the baseline mean of about 400,000 shillings. Their profits were about 64,000 shillings higher. Um, and looking at business capital, um, capital was about 11% higher, um, so 200,000 shillings higher on a, on a mean of, of sort of um, 2,500,000 um, shillings. Um, I don't see any impacts of the mobile disbursement treatment on, on savings, nor do I see any impacts of the mobile account um, treatment on, on any of the outcomes. What's also interesting here is that between um, between the baseline and end line, um, the control groups see no change in their business profits, and they also actually see no, no change in their, their business capital, despite the fact that they also got this, this large microfinance loan. Um, if anything, the only thing you actually see changing for the control group is their savings. So they're saving about 100,000 um, shillings more um, at end line than they, they were at baseline. Um, so that, that sort of fits what has been often seen in, in other studies of microfinance loans. Um, so looking at the, um, the mobile money transaction records, what I see when comparing the, the women who got the loan dispersed on the mobile money account to those who just got a mobile money account, and I don't show the control group here because this is only um, looking at the mobile money accounts that I gave the women. I don't, I don't have data on, on any personal mobile money accounts, but amongst the women I gave mobile money accounts to, I see that um, the women who had loan dispersed on the mobile money account maintain a, a large balance um, on that account over a period of time. So they're keeping um, about a quarter of the loan on the mobile money account to be on the first week and they're withdrawing that down and, until um, it's not sort of insignificantly different from zero until um, around 60 days after the loan was dispersed. So I then examine sort of the mechanisms by which the mobile disbursement might have relaxed um, constraints to business growth. So I, I examine saving constraints, but, but dismiss this um, due to little use of the accounts and primarily high bank account and use and ownership amongst this sample. So I then focus on looking at self-control difficulties and social pressure to share money. For both of these, I make indices capturing a, a wide range of different components um, of these dimensions. And both of these include um, a dimension which um, was used for the actual stratification of the sample um, and was an incentivized measure that, that women received, received money for. So again, measuring um, hyperbolic time preferences and again, measuring willingness to hide money from the spouse. So firstly, looking at self-control difficulties, what I see is that if you interact um, those who got the mobile disbursement treatment with the index of self-control difficulties, there is some evidence that there are larger impacts for women who at baseline had self-control difficulties, um, though women who didn't have self-control difficulties at baseline still received some benefit from getting their loan disbursed on a mobile money account. 
Um, however, I don't see the same heterogeneity when looking at business capital. So it seems like self-control difficulties are explaining something or there could be something going on here, but it's not able to explain um, fully my results. I then look at an index of pressure to share money with the family. And what I see here is that the entire impact of the mobile disbursement treatment is really being driven by those who at baseline reported pressure to share with their family. And that's true both when looking at business capital investment and um, impacts on business profit. So it really is those who, who struggled with sharing pressure who are, who are driving um, the impacts of the mobile disbursement treatment. And again, I'm not seeing impacts of just the mobile account. I also look at a wide range of alternative explanations. So for example, redistribution within the household. Um, as I said in the, the introduction, I see positive impacts overall on household income and consumption. So the household as a whole is better off. I'm not just redistributing towards the woman and her business. Um, I also look at remittance flows, experimental demands, and measurement error, and whether there's any sort of backlash um, against the woman, so, so either in terms of her spouse sharing less with her or, or other kind of proxies of potential backlash from the spouse, and I, I don't find any evidence of that, or whether women are more likely to default on the loan if they receive it on a mobile money account, and I don't find any impacts on those. So to conclude, my study shows that the manner in which you provide a microfinance loan matters for how it is used. Clients who receive their loan on a mobile money account hold on to some of the loan on that account, use it as and when they need, and it then able to invest more of it in their business. As a result, they have higher business profits and higher household income and consumption as a result. So generally, my study suggests that increased tailoring of financial services um, for poor women to help address the constraints, to help address social pressure constraints that they face um, is beneficial. So thank you very much um, for listening. And if you have any, any comments or, or thoughts on on um, my study, then, then please email me at this address um, to let me know. Thank you.